Hey y'all, it's me, Kevy. I have been struggle busting this month trying to find motivation to produce any content. The thought of writing a script just feels daunting. So I'm sorry, but my July wrap up is gonna be kinda half-assed. I won't go into as much detail, just short and sweet and to the point. First off, I'm so embarrassed. I forgot to include this book in my pride wrap up. You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. A queer horror novel about a serial killer and his lover who assisted with the killings until he became a victim. The book also contains a novella written by the serial killer character about this woman and some weird cybernetic shit going down. It was weird. I enjoyed it. Didn't love it, but I liked it. Am interested in reading more of him. I started July reading The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. This is an excellent essay about racism in America, and I love how unabashedly he calls out white folks. <laughs> he held nothing back, and I really appreciated that. Ring Shout is a novel set in the 1920s where the 1915 film Birth of a Nation didn't just cause a rise in the KKK, it literally turned its viewers into demons. Maurice is part of a resistance group hunting down these demons and sending them back to hell. This one was so cool. I loved Maurice and her whole team and all of the magical realism and fantasy elements. When the Reckoning Comes is about a black woman returning to her hometown for her childhood friend's wedding, facing the ghosts of her past and the ghosts of the town and its nearby plantation. I really loved the way this book used supernatural elements to reveal the disturbing truth of what happened then and continues to happen now. I read Wash Day Diaries through NetGalley, so since I already wrote a full review of it, I'll just go ahead and read that for y'all. Wash Day Diaries is a beautiful book. It is a graphic novel about four black women getting their hair done. Each chapter is a vignette into the lives of these women, conversations about their love lives, family, depression, and more. My favorite chapter was the one that was told through text messages while Nisha was at the salon. It was a creative way to tell the story, and I really liked the way the text messages were incorporated into the graphics, sometimes even having the three friends manifesting themselves into the frame to speak their text messages. That was so cool. I really loved these characters that Rouser and Smith developed. They felt real and well-rounded, and they looked really good too. The art style in this book was just lovely. I appreciated their use of color, using almost exclusively pinks and purples and oranges and yellows. It was a great aesthetic, and I enjoyed looking at this book as much as I did reading it. The back of the book also contains concept and development notes, providing some neat insight into the creation of the book. It was fun getting to peek behind the curtain at the process of making a graphic novel. My main takeaway from this book is that friendship is family. Friends who are there for you in your time of need, whether it's to help you do your hair or protect you from a harmful man, they are as much your family as your blood relatives sometimes even more so. Friendships like those seen in this book are rare, and they are beautiful and should be cherished. Overall, I loved my time reading Wash Day Diaries, and I would recommend it to anyone. I read one nonfiction book this month, Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia. I learned a lot from this book. It went all the way back to the 1500s pre-Renaissance, looking at the evolution of white perceptions of black women's bodies and the ways in which those misconceptions persisted and evolved. I wasn't expecting this book to be so academically written, but it was very well researched and educational. We also had the next installment in our Discworld group read with Scott, Rosie, and Katya. This time we read Guards Guards, the first book in the City Watch series. This book, more than any of the other ones we read, was very traditional fantasy with fighting dragons and shit, and that is so just not my thing. I still really enjoyed it, but it's definitely my least favorite Discworld book so far. I did love that the librarian was so heavily involved in this one. He seems to be in most books, but a lot of times he's just in a scene or two, or just mentioned in passing. So it was great to spend so much time with him and seeing the ways different characters interacted with him. The theme of this book was power, but also this theme wasn't as clear to me as it was in some of the the other books. Not my favorite book on the disc, but I still enjoyed it. Oh, and it was so funny. I already made a video about There Are Trans People Here by H. Melt, a poetry collection about trans joy. That video will be over here and in the description, so give that a watch for my thoughts and to hear me read a few poems. I read one other transgender poetry collection in July, The Great Good Time by Roz Cavani. A trans elder, The Great Good Time chronicles her life as a trans woman in LA in the 70s. It was wonderful reading about all of these trans people from our past. 
and I loved the voice in which she wrote. I'm just going to read you one poem from this collection, and it is called Cycle of Violence. Kid snatched my bag. I chased him in the rain. Hooked him with my umbrella round the knee. Took bag back. Left him crying. Home. Made tea. Hoped that was that. But things come round again. Inevitable. Caught me on the stairs, three of his brothers. One a flying kick. Caught grabbed his foot. From dad I knew the trick. Twist and he's down. Only a mad girl dares do that when there are three. One with a blade. Pushed kick to thigh. I'm bruised. I take some blows. Dodge. They get bored and leave. Ex-housemate knows. Phone rings. Glow's voice. Offers a gun. Say I'm afraid I won't be needing it. And pack, then leave. Fate spins the thread. We choose what life we weave. Kaveny also wrote a book called Tiny Pieces of Skull about being a trans woman in Chicago in the 70s and 80s. I really want to read that one soon, so hopefully I can find a copy. It's also on my wish list. Thanks. <laughs> I tried listening to The Memory Librarian by Janelle Monet, and I really wanted to love it, but I just wasn't feeling it. The first story was fine, and then during the second story I just struggled. I think it could be because each story has a different co-author. I love the idea of a book companion piece to Janelle Monet's Dirty Computer album, and other people seem to be loving it, but since the first of the four stories was just okay to me, it didn't seem worth continuing. Most of my notes about this next book were written pre-slump, so this will be a normal length segment as well. Aquake Amazie has been one of Booktube's darlings for years. Y'all really love them, but I hadn't read any of their work until this month when I read their most recent release, You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. This book is a romance, which is a genre Amazie hasn't done before, but from what I've heard, they're not one to stick to any genre and hop around a lot. This book is about a woman getting back into the dating scene for the first time since her husband died five years ago. She starts seeing this guy and then she meets his friend and starts seeing him instead. Then the friend takes her home to meet his family and she meets the friend's father and he is the love interest of this book. I really enjoyed my experience with this beautiful book. I loved the protagonist and her love interest and the ways they bonded over cooking and their loss and they were supportive in each other's endeavors. The book certainly followed a lot of traditional romance tropes, so it can be pretty predictable, but I didn't mind the predictability. It's familiar and comfortable. Wasn't a fan of all of the tropes that they used, though. Like the will-they-won't-they they thing. Like the two of them are obviously interested in each other. What are y'all doing? Just get together already. I much prefer when they get to that point faster, and then we can see their relationship progress from there. And there are certain moments in romance novels that can make me kind of spy rule mentally had a moment like that in this story. I'm not aware of the exact moment or sentence that caused it, but it was either during or immediately after the first kiss. It had me real fucked up for a minute, but eventually it passed and I was able to get back into the groove quickly. I also just really hate the confession trope, where even though they have been dating seriously, they're still terribly insecure and don't believe that their partner loves them. It just makes no sense to me. So you're wondering if this man loves you? He said he was willing to leave home and relocate anywhere in the world with you. That sounds like some serious commitment. Yet you don't know if he loves you? Didn't you know you loved him after that first kiss and the hours and hours of discussing your relationship and what it meant to each other. Obviously y'all loved each other. So why the fuck are y'all getting held up on this? When she was like, why would you ask me if I wanted to get married? Because he wants to marry you, obviously. <laughs> Stop being obtuse. Oh, I just, I hate that shit. But yeah, apart from a couple of those kinds of tropes, I just, I really loved this romance novel. But what I loved most about my experience with this book was the audiobook narrator, Bonnie Turpin. Y'all, her voice was lovely. And when she voiced the male characters with their deep Caribbean accent, oh, she sounded so good. Straight up, as soon as I finished it, I went and saved all of her other audiobooks because I just, I want to keep listening to her. Next, I listened to The Deep by River Solomon. I've wanted to read this one for a long time, and the premise sounds great. In the Atlantic Ocean, there's a race of mermaids, descendant from African women who were thrown overboard off slave ships. 
their origin is horrific, so they collectively choose to forget their past, selecting one individual mermaid to retain their entire history. Now the mermaid who's holding this history is really struggling with the weight of this burden and longs to be free from it. This story was sublime. I loved the way it was told and the civilization that Solomon developed. I was also surprised that there was a romance element in this book, and I actually really enjoyed that part of it. Oh, I'm so glad I finally got to experience the deep. The last audiobook I listened to in July was The Other Black Girl. This is an excellent thriller about Nella, who is the only black woman at this publishing company until Hazel arrives. She's excited to have a new friend at work until she begins to receive anonymous threatening letters telling her that she isn't welcome. Who is sending her these letters? And is Hazel really her friend? Is anyone really her friend? And what happened to this publishing company's only black editor in history who went missing decades ago. I really enjoyed this mystery. There are also some sort of supernatural elements. Not like ghostly paranormal, like something not necessarily grounded in reality. But if you don't mind magical realism elements in a thriller, then it's definitely one to check out. And it's being developed into a Hulu series, which I am so excited to watch. I read two novels by Sister Solja, The Coldest Winter Ever and Life After Death. I made a video about these two books already, so please go check that one out. So those are all the books that I read and listened to in July. Again, I'm terribly sorry I wasn't able to give these books as much of a discussion as they deserve. I just don't have it in me right now to do more than this. Hopefully August will turn out better, although since August is already almost over, I suspect that won't be the case. <laughs> So tell me, which of these books caught your attention? Tell me your faves in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if it pleases and sparkles, I'll see you in the next video. Mwah!